In this video, we're going to look at the LZX Navigator. Navigator and Shape Changer together form a powerful shape generation and transformation system. However, today we're going to look at some of the things you can do with Navigator without a Shape Changer. Navigator is labeled as a linear position and rotation processor. It's designed to take incoming horizontal and vertical ramps and use those as the basis of rotation and position controls so you can move shapes and patterns freely around the screen. In this first patch, we're going to build a simple ramp-based shape and then start to integrate Navigator for further animation and control. So to begin, I'm going to take horizontal and vertical ramps. I'm going to plug those into a passage. And then we'll just take a look at that output. So here I'm just using the passage to add the two ramps together. This is functionally giving me the same thing I would see on my H plus V ramp, but just with a little bit more flexibility and control. To make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to use a staircase. So now I'm starting to get a number of diagonal bars. And to make that even a little bit more clear to see, I'm going to go into a keyer first. So there we have our basic pattern. Now I'm going to take my horizontal and vertical ramps and put those into the navigator. Take the horizontal and vertical out and put them in the same destinations we had before. So at the navigator's basic default settings, this is going to look exactly the same as what we were seeing before. I have all my switches down, my X and Y position, anchor points, and rotation all in the middle. So now as I begin to change these controls, I can begin to move my shape in different ways, including being able to rotate. There's a built-in spin animator if I push this button. This knob now controls the speed of my spin. And I can also change the anchor point around which the shape is spinning. I could change the Y position, the X position. I also have X and Y mirror controls. So if I go to X and Y mirror, I can get these nice diamond shapes. Now keep in mind, the way that Navigator works, instead of mirroring down here, I can also mirror the ramp itself on my visual cortex, and I'll get a pretty much identical result, as you can see. I can also mirror in both locations, which is going to give me a quadrupled mirror. Navigator also has voltage control inputs for my X and Y controls. This can be assigned to either the position or the anchor point. So as you can see here, instead of manually moving the X position knob, I could plug in an LFO. And of course, I can adjust how much or how little of this effect I want. This control is bi-directional. I could also switch to modulate the anchor point instead of the position. And this voltage control input goes all the way up to video rates. So here, I have a synced oscillator. I can use to further modulate that position. So let's take the Y voltage control. Let's put that LFO back into that one. And then let's set the rotation to spin. So there we can get some pretty nice intricate stuff going on. I can turn all my mirrorings off. I can switch through different primary ramp shapes. 
turn some mirrors back on. And I could even adjust the mix in my passage. Maybe play around with play around with the staircase a little bit. The rotation animation mode can be switched from doing a full continuous 360 to a more ping pong motion. There you go. <clears throat> so those are some very basic controls of how you can start to use a navigator in your patches. Next, we'll look at a slightly more complex example. So in this patch, we're gonna look at another way to use Navigator to create an intricate shape. Again, I'm gonna start with my H and V ramps. This time I'm gonna go straight into Navigator. And I'm gonna create a very basic shape by taking the H and V ramp outputs and putting them into the threshold VC and source of a doorway. I'll take the key output so we can view that, start to zero out all of my controls. We should start to see a diamond. I'm taking H and V ramps and using them to threshold and source a key is a very quick and easy way to make simple cutout shapes. I'm gonna flip the foreground and the background so we have a white diamond here. Now in this particular patch, before getting the navigator too heavily involved, I wanna process these ramps to make my shape more dynamic. So I'm gonna take both of my H and V ramps, put each into the through input on a passage, and then I'll take the outputs from each of these channels and put them back into H and V on my navigator. So I'm gonna zero out all these controls. That's pretty good. And that's pretty good. So now the simplest way I can process these ramps is by using an LFO on each of the two channels. So now you can see it's already starting to give me some movement. I'll slow this one down. One thing I do like to do though, is set my pendulum very fast, just to see where the ranges of my animation are. So I can make sure I keep it within frame. So I'm gonna get this, so the Y is bouncing up to down, just touching the edges of frame. And same for my X control. I'm using Passage to add some animation to my ramp before I even do anything in the Navigator. This is gonna allow me to add a few different dimensions of movement. I'm gonna adjust my keying threshold to make that shape a little bit smaller. Maybe soften it just a little bit. And I'll start by turning my spin controls on. So this is gonna to start to give me some additional different movement. Next, I'll take an output from my prismatic ray and plug that into the X voltage control. I'm gonna take another output from my passage and I'm gonna put that into the source on a staircase. I'm just gonna show you what that looks like really quick using my other channel. So you can see I'm getting some bars just moving across. So let's switch that back. I'm gonna put this into the Y voltage control. So that starts to give me some different shapes. So now that I have a nice basic setup for my key, I'm gonna do something a little bit tricky. And I'm going to take the H and V ramps that are coming into Navigator and I'm going to multiply them. So 
So this should get me right back to where I was before. You could also use stack cables for this. I'm going to take this output, go into one channel of a color chords. I'm going to take the RGB outputs from here, plug those into my visual cortex. Now I'll be able to go back and take these H and V ramp outputs that were coming into the navigator and put them directly into channels on my color chords. This is going to allow me to get a really nice dynamic color mix. So now if I adjust my different settings, start to get these cool animated mountains. Let's make that really gross looking. Something that starts to look like audio waveforms. Let me go pure RGB so you can see kind of what's going on here. There we go. So here we have the same H plus V ramps, first being animated by a passage and then subsequently being animated by a navigator. Since we're splitting them before they hit the navigator, we're able to layer that animation on top of the animation coming from the passage. If you want to see an even stronger effect, another option would be to take these two channels Again, just the original H and V ramps being animated by the passage only, putting them into a fortress. And then we're going to use a marble index instead of a color chords to get a more keyed effect. So now you can see this animation that's simply coming from passage is driving this result in the fortress. I can switch through different logic modes and different palettes. And then I have a separate layer of animation from the navigator that I can layer on top. So by switching through some different palette options and adjusting some of my settings, I've gotten here. So all of our animation in this case is being generated by a horizontal and vertical ramp. They're both going into a passage where they're being modulated by an LFO. And then that signal is being split. So one version of those ramps is then going to Navigator for some additional animation. And the other version is going to Fortress to be colorized in a different way. The two images are then composited together in Marble Index and sent out to the visual cortex. So far, we've only been using ramps from the visual cortex. In the next patch, we'll look at using the more advanced ramps that you can generate with Diver. In this last patch, we'll switch to using ramps from Diver into Navigator. If you don't have a Diver, there's still some useful tricks that you'll be able to learn from this portion of the video. In addition to exploring this combination, we're also going to look at some more interesting ways to work with the H and V outputs and some more unusual techniques for color mixing. So to begin, I'm going to take the H and V outputs from my Diver, plug them into the H and V inputs on Navigator. And so far we've looked at two different ways to combine the H and V outputs. We've looked at using them as the source and threshold of a doorway. We've also looked at adding them together, which of course you can do with passage or bridge. Another way of adding the H and V ramps together is to use a color chords. So I'm going to plug into layer one and layer two of a color chords, make sure all my outputs are down. Now, obviously the most typical use for color chords is as a color mixer, but in this case, I just want to use it as a matrix mixer. So each of these three RGB outputs can give me a different blend of layer one and layer two together. I can quickly demonstrate this by going into my marble index. So my red channel, I can start to bring in different amounts of my horizontal and vertical ramps. On the green channel, I can get a totally separate mix. And this is not being affected at all by what's happening up here. So let's skip the marble index for now. Look just at our black and white mix so we can start to see what the diver is doing. So the diver has many different banks of ramps, different shapes, including some uh, blocky ones inspired by the fortress. I'm just going to keep it on a basic triangle for now. But the diver gives you the unique ability to animate move your ramps. 
It also has mirroring controls, built-in scrolling animations, and of course, the ability to modulate the horizontal phase, waveform, and vertical phase. So let's set this back to basic. So obviously, as you can see, this is going to give us another layer of movement and animation that we can input into the navigator. So let's finish building our basic patch, and then we'll come back to some of the controls on Diver. So I'm going to take the output from the red channel of my color chords and put that into a doorway. I'm going to take the green output and put that into a staircase. The staircase output I'm going to put on the opacity voltage control of channel B of the marble index. So you can already see how that's working. Now I'm going to take the key of my doorway, and in order to get a color mix on this, I'm going to go into the input on a passage, and then take the red, green, and blue output from my passage into channel A on my marble index. So what this allows me to do Take my key. There it is. And adjust the color mix by using the controls in my passage. So basically, we're taking this key output, it's flowing into all three channels, and then we can adjust the red, green, and blue amounts. So with this basic patch set up, you can see as we adjust the color chords, we're now getting a different mix going into our doorway than we are going into our staircase. So this is another great way to take a single pair of H and V outputs and get multiple different shapes. On the navigator, we can begin to play with our X, Y, and rotation controls. We'll get pretty similar results to what we've seen before. I could turn mirroring off you'll get something a little bit more expected. But you'll notice that the key and the staircase are behaving in very different ways, thanks to the matrix mixing on the color chords. We can also mirror on the diver itself, mirror on both to set up a nice tiling, start to get some spinning involved for some automatic modulation. And of course, we can also add in some animation from the diver itself. I like things to be pretty subtle and slow. If we go through the different banks on Diver, we can start to get different shapes. So I'll keep it on the circle one for now. And we also have another channel available in Color Quartz. We could patch this into a number of things. Let me start by trying an H minus V ramp. And so now we can start to introduce little bits of this H plus V ramp into the keyer and the staircase, respectively. We could also go to something a little bit more complex, like a prismatic ray. There we go. And finally, we can add a little bit of X and Y modulation to the navigator. So I'm going to take two simple LFOs. I can adjust how much or how little I want of that. And then of course I can go back to my passage and start to play a little bit more with my color mixes. And do the same on my marble index. and adjust what my staircase is doing. Let me pull a little bit of that out. There we go. And adjust my doorway. I could also, of course, modulate the threshold on my doorway or invert it. And of course, start jumping through different banks on the diver.
And so from here, I have a lot of different places I can start to play to dramatically change the pattern. So that should give you some idea of what you can do with a navigator, even if you don't have a shape changer. It's a great way to add movement to otherwise static patches. If you're into creating very symmetrical pattern-based work, it's a perfect addition to a system of any size. We hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, please leave any questions or ideas for future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.